Dr. Bonder, it's a real privilege uh, to speak to you. Welcome. Thank you for having me here. I want to go back to that day. 30 years ago tomorrow, you're strapped into the shuttle and about to do science experiments in space. So in a lot of ways, maybe the greatest scientific challenge of your storied career. But I think it's worth reminding people who are watching the, the potential danger that you and astronauts faced, the, the, the Challenger uh, disaster had happened just, what, uh, six years earlier. There would be another shuttle disaster about a decade later. Tell us about kind of the courage, the valor Three, that all of you two, needed to have one, as you got ready zero, for that launch. Zero. And liftoff, liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery. It's very true. I mean, it's always said that the most dangerous part of space flight are the launch, the landing, and everything in between. And after a while, one gets used to figuring out what the risk is that you want to accept that morning or that afternoon and just getting on with it because it's a professional job and we just want to do it well. Uh, not to dwell on it, though, but but you had to. Uh, was it a video message to to your to your mother where you had to contemplate her seeing this in the worst possible circumstances? Three hours before I was supposed to get up in the morning to go onto the shuttle, I decided I'd leave an audio tape for my for my mother, and it's never been played. It's never been played since my flight. I still have it, and I think someday I might listen to it. But I, I don't know what was wrong with me. I thought, well, I better leave some kind of voice to say, it's okay, Mom, this is what I want to do. And I had to shut the tape off all the time because I was you know, tearing up. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think all of this is, is, is a peak inside a time when, you know, the, the immense challenges that, that you and other astronauts faced. And now we live in a time where if you're rich enough, you can go to space. This era of space tourism, I, I, I'm really curious, what do you think of that? I think while well, space tourism has been going on for a while, the Russians have extracted a lot of money. Uh, I, mean, I think about Madame Ansari that went up into space. So they used Mir and the International Space Station for, for people who were not professionally trained astronauts to fly. Uh, um, and, you know, you can't tell somebody how to use their money. I mean, you really, you can suggest and ethically hope they will do it. But if billionaires have the money to construct a toy that they want to go into space with, one can only hope that there's some spinoffs from some of the information that we get from technology. But no one likes to see these kinds of things built into wildlife preserves or encroaching on habitat that, that needs to be used in an ethical manner differently. So I think those are, there are, there are conflicts about that. It's, it's tough, I think, for a professional astronaut, uh, myself included, to be able to watch somebody go up for 25 seconds and not look at the earth, but choose to play with some smarties. <laughs> Let's put your impact as an astronaut in perspective. We went to three other Canadian astronauts and asked them to, to talk about you, and let, let's play that tape now. Roberta Bondar's contribution to space travel has been to open the door and the dreams for so many others, to take a huge personal risk to do something so that others could follow in her footsteps and to show us the world in a way that we'd never seen it before. Thanks and respect, Roberta. Roberta's impact on space travel has been that of a pioneer. She blazed the trail for the many scientists, physicians, women, and Canadians who followed her. Then in the past 30 years, she has very creatively used this mission experience, as well as her photography and her foundation to help us all better appreciate the planet's environment. Congratulations, Roberta. Hi, Roberta. This is Jenny Seide Gibbons from the Canadian Space Agency, and I just want to say congratulations on the 30th anniversary of your space flight. I also want to take this opportunity to say thank you for inspiring me and countless other Canadians around the world throughout your careers in neuroscience, space, and conservation since your space flight. I just think we are so fortunate to have you to look up to, to hear from. You're very generous with your experiences and we're just so lucky to have you. So thank you so much and enjoy all of the joy that today brings. I hope it's truly a wonderful celebration. I loved watching your face as you listened to those, those tributes to Canadians who have been in space, the third waiting for her assignment. Your reaction to, to what they were saying? 
Well, it's very generous. It's uh, it's also good that we're all still alive <laughs> 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 and look pretty good still. You know, uh, no, it's very it's very nice for people to take the time to to mark this anniversary. Uh, I, I just think it's it's just a, a wonderful sense of respect for what it is we do, and especially seeing Jenny. Uh, on the screen because I know she's a new mom and she is working very, very hard and training very hard. And she's the next woman, hopefully, will be flying in space. Uh, certainly Bob Thursk has, uh, ha has done a lot being on space station, uh, being in the shuttle. And of course, Chris Hadfield has been remarkable in his spacewalks and in the work that he's done uh, since his space flight. So it, it was all very, very generous of them. Dr. Bonder, I, I know this is a, a big question, but, but what do you hope your legacy will be? Well, I hope my legacy will be about a person who tried, a person who was able to move the bar, especially for humankind. I think that for Canadian women, it's good to have role models, regardless of what field it's in. But I think Mainly, I like people to look at me as a person who has a high degree of ethics and was trying to do something to share her vision of the Earth from space and how special it is to help other people engage with the natural world. It was so impressive reading about you getting ready for this interview. I certainly have followed you in the news, but I, I'd kind of forgotten how many areas you are so accomplished in from medicine to, uh, to, to photography, for example. And it's a real privilege talking to you today. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you so much.